Hello everyone, Dr. Maiden here with another virtual office hours video. This is going to be focusing um, in the kind of the vein of all of the videos I've been doing about uh, not only majoring in political science, but how to find jobs in political science, you know, how to take those next steps moving forward with your political science degree. And so the focus of this one is getting a job overseas. Okay, so this has come up quite a bit in the comments. Students are curious about how to find jobs overseas or what type of jobs they would be suited for that could get them overseas with a political science degree. Um, and this one's another tough one to do. You know, if you've, I'll link down below the video of kind of, you know, what to do with a political science degree or jobs that you can get with a political science degree. This is a tough video to do if we're thinking, how do I, work abroad with my political science degree because the sky's kind of the limit again here. If you've watched that other video, you know that I talked about uh, there's so much, there's so much that you can do with a political science degree. It depends on what your interests are, how you've double majored, what type of internship experience you have. So I have kind of two things that I'm going to say that will be, you know, preppers for you as you're thinking about especially if you're early in your undergrad, right? Early in your undergrad, early in your political science degree, building out towards this future you want when you graduate that is working and living overseas. So there's these two approaches pretty much. It's basically, imagine <laughs> the, the analogy that I'm gonna use here is like getting into a swimming pool, right? Testing the water. There are some people that get in gradually, right? Some people that want to stick their toes in, how warm is it, right? And then they might sit on the ledge and then they might cup some water up their arms and they're just, they're getting comfortable before they sink into the water, right? And you can have another person that just cannonballs into the water. These are basically the two approaches. So depending on what's more comfortable for you, you can think of taking that baby steps approach, right? The step-by-step -step approach. Maybe you start with doing a two-week trip that's part of a class, right? Of getting yourself overseas. That's often where it starts. Before you're thinking about what job am I going to have that's going to keep me overseas, you need to start with, I need to get some experience overseas. So you can do that baby step approach where you say, oh, I'm going to do a two week thing, or maybe you decide one summer you're going to do the French, the intensive French program, and you're going to go and be in the French countryside for a month and a half, and you're going to do intensive French for a month and a half, right? Maybe you'll do something like that. Maybe you'll do a structured internship opportunity in the summer that lasts one month or three months, right? These are smaller programs, smaller budget, smaller time commitment that's still getting you overseas. Um, very often, especially if they're undergrad themed programs, they're gonna be very structured. You're gonna feel very safe, but you're getting your feet wet, right? That is the point of this. And then like a snowball rolling downhill, right? Sorry for the new metaphor. Like a snowball rolling downhill, program begets program, length often begets length. And before you know it, you could do something like be overseas for the whole of your junior year. Maybe you do an exchange for a whole year. That's kind of the approach that I took, right? I took very much that baby step approach that I did. I did a month long program and then I did another month long program and then I did a two week program between two semesters and then I did a whole year. And the next time I went abroad, I was gone for about two months. And then the next time it was for over a year, right? So it can be that baby step approach that's building you out to having that familiarity and the comfort level that when you're ready to say, I'm going for a contract for a whole year, right? Or I'm going to go study abroad for a whole year. You're ready to do that, right? The other approach though, is just that cannonball approach. You can just dive in. And I know people that have done that, right? They have never been to that country. In some cases, they've never been out of the country and they'll just dive in and apply for Peace Corps, right? They've never been outside the country and here they go, they're in Peace Corps and they get accepted. And before they know it, they're living in a Ghanaian village right in the middle of nowhere. So you can do it if that if that is an approach you want to take and you want to seize an opportunity as it comes and you're given the opportunity and you want to dive in, go for it. Some people, that's not their comfort level. So you need to know what your comfort level is. The other side of this is that build up approach is all things that you're padding your resume and you're building out the, these different sets of experiences 
so that when it comes time to apply for something like a job with USAID or a job with Chemonix or something where you're wanting to work for the international development community, you've got a number of different programs that you can say, see, I did this thing that was two weeks. I did this thing that was two months. I've done a year. I have flexibility here. And they were in different countries, right? So those are some things that you can think about, whether you want to do this baby step approach to getting yourself abroad, or you want to just dive all in and say, I'm doing a year exchange. I'm going to go to Peru, right? My Spanish is good enough. I've tested. They've accepted me. I'm going to Peru for a whole year. You can do that, right? It really depends on your comfort level. From there, both of these things are talking about how to get you familiar, how to get you just kind of internationalized, right? How to get you engaging with other cultures, engaging with other languages, having that prolonged period of being outside the country. Those are all great things that are gonna prepare you for a career of continuing to be outside of the country. From there, then you're actually looking at how do I find jobs? And I'm going to provide a couple of links below that I use in my Politics of Developing Countries class that are search engines. Search engines that are specific for finding jobs that are kind of, many of these are in like the peace building field, the development field, government. Um, so some of them might be relevant and some of them might not, but I'm going to link all of them below so that you can take a look. Rather than dive into all of them in this video, I'm just going to say check below, right? So if you're curious of taking that next step to actually find finding jobs to get you and keep you overseas, check the links below um, and you're more than welcome to explore any of those. Some of them might be US based, others might be contract where it's not like a permanent job, they're looking for someone for a temporary position. Any of these though could be useful to you depending on your, on your, um, your needs and your interests, right? So hopefully this was helpful. Um, just a little bit of a primer here to, you know, the two, the two steps of baby steps into the water or cannonball into the water. I think both are valid. I think it really depends on your personality as to which one's going to fit you better. But it's definitely important to do something during your undergraduate, even into your master's, even into your PhD, if that's what you're doing. You've got to be getting yourself in the field if you want to be taken seriously as someone who deserves to work outside of the country, right? You've got to get out. You've got to get out of the country. You've got to have those experiences, intern, volunteer, uh, teach, right? You could do something like Fulbright ETA, teach English in a foreign country for a year, and then transition into the field you actually want to be doing overseas. All these different things are options to you. Um, I'll be making more videos, I believe, in the future where I'll talk about some of these specific opportunities like a Fulbright ETA, some volunteer organizations I know of that I have vetted or even I've participated in um, that I trust students to go on, right? I'll make some more videos about those types of things. I can even provide a couple of links to a few things down below. Um, but that's just a little video here to say it's definitely possible. Um, it's definitely possible to live and work abroad. There's a lot of opportunity and a lot of opportunity if you have a political science degree um, to get into these fields that would have you be living and working abroad.